Hi, this is The Brassic Gamer, and this is an HDMI projector. Um, I was looking online for one of these um, about a year ago and ended up with two. Neither of them were working. Um, but this was probably the better of the two. Uh, this is an NEC M230X. And uh, this is quite a popular projector. I've seen quite a lot of these online. Um, they were used in schools, I think quite a bit. This one certainly was because I had a label from a county council in the UK. And um, it's got some pretty good features. And you've got USB, LAN, HDMI, two VGA inputs, S-Video, composite, and monitor out. It does, however, suffer from the dynamic contrast error. So we know what the dynamic contrast error looks like from the manual. Um, it's the red status light flashing nine times. Um, but what does it sound like? That ticking noise. And then you get a beep and there we go again, more ticking and then it shuts down. So what we're going to be doing in this video is showing you how to fix that error. First you want to remove the air filter which is dead easy. Just pull this clip and it hinges out and you can just remove it. So the bulb cover is removed by unscrewing this screw here and just sliding and lifting out. So once you've removed the air filter cover and the bulb cover, you've got 10 screws. Um, eight of them are on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've also got one hiding here in the air filter cover. And you've got one on top in here under the bulb cover. So once the case screws have been removed, gently lift the top of the cover from where the air filter was. And don't lift too vigorously because there is a wire here. This is the sensor that can tell whether the lens cover is open or not. So it's going to pop that off. PZB and then put it to one side. So now that we're inside, there are only three screws we need to do. One is down here in this corner next to a plastic grommet and another one on the opposite side down in here and also remove this black screw which holds the earthing cable on. So we need to disconnect the ribbon cables. This is for each of the um, RGB LCDs. So you just pop off the, the black part of the connector which locks the ribbon cable in place, so make sure that's up. And then just use something not sharp to pop out the ribbon connector and do that for each of those. So with those two screws removed in the corners there, there's just this screw to remove and then we can lift the board up. The, um, the whole mount for the main PCB comes free, but I want to remove that cable, this cable, and the largest connector down here, which is for the iris. So I'm just going to pull that out. Probably shouldn't be pulling by the wires themselves because that's a weak point. 
you can kind of pry out the uh, plastic connector itself that'd be better so then that allows us to the uh, earth wire can get hooked so we rotate that up and then that reveals the, the internals and it's probably the easiest way to support that so you're not straining any of the connectors is to use the lid The next bit is actually really simple. Um, once you've, this cable is kind of hooked under a, a plastic kind of clip on the chassis there. So we just want to make sure that's free. And first we want to remove these two screws here. And that allows us uh, to remove the heat shield. So that protects the plastic uh, on the iris from the heat of the of the bulb. The bit we're interested in now is the iris mechanism, which is here, and these two screws are the ones that we want to remove, and then that allows you to carefully lift out the iris mechanism. And the reason we don't want to take out this entire unit, you can if you need to, but there is a lens either side. If you touch those, they're going to be very difficult to clean. So you're better off leaving it in. If you do need to, you can see there's a screw down there in the bottom. Just unscrew that one screw and then this will come out. So this is the actual iris mechanism and it's actually ridiculously over-engineered, um, but quite clever at the same time. So there are a few components to it. You've got these blades here, which as you can see, when I turn this gear, they close and they effectively throttle the amount of light which is allowed through. So that's why it's dynamic contrast because this can be adjusted between that point and that point to allow a lot of light or not so much light through depending on the ambient conditions. First we're going to need to remove the motor and that's just done by removing those two screws either side there. So with those two screws out you can remove the motor. Just note how the PCB of the motor tucks in with that little plastic clip at the bottom there. So the motor itself doesn't usually go wrong and you can inspect the teeth on that. They appear all to be in good nick. Um, they are all attached to the same connector though so you can't actually completely remove the motor. You're just going to have it hanging around for a bit. But what you can see in there is the other side of this PCB, which is the optical sensor. And we'll come onto that again in a moment. Um, this leaves us just with the gearing mechanism. So you've got a small gear here, which is kind of an intermediary between the motor and this gear and there is actually a clutch in this gear so that if there's an obstruction on this side it won't burn out the motor it will just click so if you're hearing that clicking at startup that's that gear doing its thing and that's normal behavior so if you look in here there is a linkage at the bottom there, which is connected just by a plastic pin on this gear. So I'm going to take this bracket off and what that allows us to do is carefully, if you do it from the middle then you're not putting any force or flexing the main part of these gears and although they're fairly sturdy, you don't want to break it. 
So that just comes off that capstan. These two blades are linked to each other in the middle there. See, there's like an arm. If I can pick it up, there's an arm here which links this blade to this blade. So the gear turns, well, pulls the linkage here, which pushes and pulls this blade, which then turns the other blade as well. And we can get to those if you need to lubricate the mechanism, because this should be, this should be freely moving. There shouldn't be any resistance. It shouldn't um, stop and start. It should just be as smooth as this. Can't hear any noise. There's no rubbing. That's because I have, you can see it shiny. This was really, uh, there was a lot of friction. So what I did was I used some clipper oil. You can use gear oil as well, any kind of kind of fine oil and I just got a cotton bud and I saturated the top of the cotton bud with the oil and then just used that to paint every surface every plastic surface that I could find there that was in or around the mechanism what we're going to do now so that you can see how to do that is to Reveal this mechanism underneath. Now, pay attention, there are some springs. And these aren't gonna pop off if you undo this. That comes in the next step. So don't be too worried about undoing this plate, which holds everything in place. But you will have to pay attention to how they attach. So I'm just gonna remove this plate now. And you've got four separate elements here. You've got the main, the two main plastic bases, which have these um, matte metal pieces attached. And then you have two other separate components on top of those, which kind of piggyback the main element. And they've got the shiny bit of metal. If I open it, you can see how I don't know if you can actually you can see how the shiny bit moves independently of the dulled bit. So it's quite a clever mechanism. Um, unfortunately, because it's complicated, it does die. So the first bit that you remove from here. And just lever up in this position is the shiny metal part. So that leaves you with the two uh, map blades, and now you can see the mechanism working. So the next one to come off is this side. And again, there's going to be a little pop just where there's a plastic pin here, which goes through a hole in this arm. So I'm going to gently separate those two. This is where the springs are. And I'll show you how those go back on correctly. For now, you just want to make sure you keep the springs together like that. So this is the area that you want to paint with your cotton bud, cuter, whatever you want to call it. Just rub oil all over these capstans, and all over every surface where there's plastic, rubbing against plastic, because it's amazing the amount of friction that can be produced. Also notice how this linkage is now free. So once you've lubricated all of that, you might also want to try and get some oil down in these holes as well. If you look carefully, you can see a line 
just there. That corresponds to the spring which has got the kind of ends sticking out of it. If I put it into place, you'll see what I mean. See just there where the base of the spring is captured within that line. We want that to be there because that creates tension when the spring comes around in this direction. Now, it's obviously going to come out easily now because there's no pressure holding it down. But once we return this blade, you can see underneath, just here there's a notch. Plastic pin, that holds the top of that spring. And that's what, he, it pulls the top of the spring and that's what creates the tension. That's the range of movement. I want that spring there to be on this side of the plastic pin. It doesn't want to naturally do that. And let's try and bring it around. Got it. Now let's push that down without it coming out of place. I think I've got it. So what you should find is holding that, you should feel that it's moving of its own accord see if i let go of it it springs back against my finger so that's good that means it's catching so we need to hold that down in place while we add the other base and its spring this spring doesn't have an orientation as such. I'm going to take this link out and I'm going to attach that That spring on that side, making that pop up a bit. Next, we need to add the shiny blades. So we've got just here, that's the plastic pin that goes into that hole. So it goes onto that capstan there, get the hinge in place, and Bob's your uncle. The, you know you've got it the right way round because the edge of this blade should be slanted backwards towards you, looking at it from this direction. That dot, that hinge. Got it. So now, with that tension in place, we can put this bracket back on that will stop it from flying off. This is very fiddly. I'm sorry about the lack of quality on the footage, but limited equipment available, and I thought it's worth doing. So now, hopefully you'll find that it's moving freely. So it should open right up like that and close right up like that, okay? 
if it doesn't, something's getting caught, you haven't put it back together properly, or uh, this arm is getting caught up in this section maybe, that can limit the movement as well. Make sure things well lubed. And I'm gonna get this gear back on and again lining it up. Okay. Before you secure it again, just make sure that that's all working in unison. Then we can put this plate back on and you should have full movement with this gear. Once we've got that back on, observe how in the closed position The gap is minimal between the, the blades and they're touching here and that, that limits their movement. In the full open position, it looks like that. And also underneath, you can see this plastic bit here, which is what gets picked up by the optical sensor. So if I turn this gear, you can see it move in and out of position. And that's how the optical sensor knows that this mechanism is working. So now we can put this back together and test it. First, I'm going to install the optical sensor. We route the wires. So then we can just route these wires through here. Grab the other end of that wire, install the motor, the gear obviously down. Just make sure your PCB clips in there. Okay, so we've got really good movement here. You can feel a bit more resistance with the motor in place, but you can see how that is fully working now. And we are going to, well, root these wires back in here now. And now I'm gonna test this in situ before putting it all back together again to make sure it actually works. Okay, we've got our projector back and I've put the PCB back into place. Now we just need to plug in this connector and this connector. Don't worry about the LCDs, we don't need those yet. It doesn't detect those. Um, but we do need to plug in this. And we're just gonna observe the movement. Make sure you've got power. Remember, always be careful when working on a live appliance. There is a micro switch here. See how you've got a red light? That's because this micro switch indicates that the panel for the bulb is open. So if you press it, you get a green light, which means it's ready. Now, keep an eye on the iris. I'm going to press the power button. We want to see it move. Yes. See, no clicking whatsoever. And if you let go, it'll turn off. If you still hear clicking, it means that the optical sensor is not detecting this gear moving. So something has gone awry with your uh, putting back together again. So with the iris back in place, Secured with those two screws again. Don't forget to put your shield back in. And then you've got two screws there. And you can tell which ones are for that, even though they're the same size as the others because they've got threadlock painted on. Okay, next, plug your iris back in. This cable over here. And this one. If you forget any of these, you're gonna get an error. So get it right the first time. You need to encourage the LCD connectors back through. That's the trickiest one because of the lack of lateral movement that you get. And these ones either side are relatively straightforward. And once they're through, just be very gentle with them because they're quite fragile connectors. Make sure it's fully flat against the connector and then just push the plastic part of the cable goes in. Go. So once you've got everything plugged back in, um, you've got this one screw with 
got a couple of washers on it actually. And we're just going to screw that into the corner here. So when refitting the chassis that holds the PCB, just make sure it's all lined up down at the bottom. And one way to make sure that is the case is to make sure that there's like a plastic rivet down here. Make sure that that is located in the hole in the metal chassis. And there's another one on the other side here. So make sure that they're going through the locating hole and then you've got a screw here and a screw on the other side. And don't forget the black screw for the earthing wire. So with those internal screws in place, uh, we can put the cover back on. Don't forget the sensor for the lens cover. And you know that you've got something missing because there's an empty socket on the board there. And lower the case on. So it's all back together again. Status light is good. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah. It's got the bulb coming out to full brightness now. But there we go. It's working.